everybody. I'm Alejandra, librarian at the Poinciana Branch Library with the Osceola Library System, and welcome to our program, Stained Glass Goblets. Follow along with me if you picked up the supplies for this craft. You can also check out osceolalibrary.org slash summer dash learning for a full list of supplies of, for all of our Crafty Live programs. Just so we know how many people are joining us today, go ahead and let me know in the chat box how many people are watching with you. So today we're gonna to be creating this stained glass goblet effect using some wine glasses and glass paint. It does really give a cool sort of old timey effect. So what you're gonna need for this craft is a wine glass. I'm going for a goblet style, but you could use a champagne glass or something a little more delicate. You're gonna need some metallic gold writer paint. You can go with a silver or a copper too, but I'm gonna opt for gold today. And you're gonna need some glass paint. So I have this kind that comes in tubes and that needs to be dispensed onto a palette. So if you're using this kind of paint, you're also gonna need a palette and some paint brushes. But glass paint does come in marker form. It comes in these tip bottles too. So if you do find it in this format, you can go ahead and try that way too, whatever you prefer. And then I do recommend having some cotton swabs and napkins on hand just to clean up any lines or for any messes. Okay, so we can go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start with a clean, dry glass and my metallic paint and then go ahead and give it a shake because these do kind of separate a little bit. And then we're going to just start by drawing circles all over the glass. And then you're going to go about halfway up. Okay. And I usually keep the lines pretty thin, but you can do a thicker line if you prefer. Okay. And this is a time consuming step since you're pretty much just drawing consecutive circles over and over again. And it'd be best to keep your circles about no smaller than that, because then it is a little difficult to fill them in with the glass paint later. So you can stick with larger circles, it'd be a little bit easier later on. Okay, and this step usually takes me anywhere between 15 and 20 minutes, depending on how good you are at drawing circles. It would also be a good idea to practice on a piece of paper first before going on to your wine glass. You know, just in case your circles come out a little bit wobbly. A little bit of practice makes your circles nice and circular. Okay, I'm pretty much just going to do this all around the glass about halfway up. So probably stopping at that circle there. And then you're going to need to do some on the base, too. And I'm just going to completely cover the base in circles. Okay, and then before you go in with the colorful paint, you are going to need to let this dry. This does take a few hours to dry. I let mine dry overnight, but you can give this maybe a couple hours. So for the purpose of this demo, I have a completed and dry wine glass here. And you can see there that once the paint goes metallic and kind of shiny, that's when you know it's dry. Whereas this one is kind of still a little bit more gray. So once it gets to this color, you know that you're ready to paint. Okay, so I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm just going to do clusters of colors. So like some purple, blue. But if you want to do, you know, random colors here and there, that's up to you too. And you don't want to glob this on too thick because this paint is already pretty thick. Yeah, I know it's looking a little transparent. And the first application usually is a little bit transparent. So you can add a second layer once this one is dry.
If you did have the glass paint that comes in the tipped bottles, it would be a little bit faster. So if you can, go ahead and grab that one. Okay, and since this paint is a little thick, you can see it's a pooling a little bit there. But we can go ahead and fix that a little bit later. And if you don't want to add a second layer, you don't have to. You can leave it transparent like this. I think it's really pretty this way too. Okay, and then make sure you just wipe your brush between colors. You could even maybe swirl some colors together, like add some little, little bit of purple there. That'd be pretty. Yep, so you're just going to continue that with all your colors all around the glass. And then just make sure you get your circles that are at the base of the glass too. See, just then I put it on a little too thick and it's starting to pull. But that's okay. I do have a glass with one coat of paint on. And then you can see here that it's pulled a little bit in here too. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another layer of paint to this one. And this glass paint does take um, about an hour or two hours to be dry to the touch and then you can go in with another coat. See, and then once you add the second coat, it's nice and opaque. Yeah, and if your paint is pooling, you can go ahead and flip your glass upside down and then it'll just pool in the other direction and even out the, the layers. Yep, that's where the cotton swab will come in handy. Fix little messes there. Okay, you don't have to touch up every single circle, just a few here and there. Like that one's a little bit pool, pooling there. Yep, and you can do the same thing with vases, with a clear mug even, just a lot of different glassware and get this same sort of jeweled, like bejeweled effect. Okay, and then I would just go all the way around with those colors. And then this would be our final product. Okay, this glass paint does completely air dry in about a week. Like I said, it's dry to the touch in about an hour or so. But once it is completely dry in about a week, it is waterproof, so you should be able to wash it. Just make sure you follow the directions that come on your glass paint. Some glass paint does require to be baked, others not. So just make sure you read those directions. And we're all done. So now it's time for our Beanstack secret code. Let me get my sign. In case you don't know, Beanstack is an online platform where you can earn points and badges for completing activities in our summer learning program. So you can earn points for completing our trivia, our escape rooms, or for attending live programs like this one. So for attending this live program, you can earn 10 points and a badge by putting in the code WIZARD. Again, the secret code is WIZARD. Our top three points earners every week can win a gift card and our top two points earners at the end of the summer learning program can win a grand prize. Okay, just as a reminder, our next live program is Saturday, July 18th at 1 p.m. where Mitchell Osborne will be talking about animal communication. Thanks so much for joining us. Check out osceolalibrary.org and follow us on social media for more information about our programs, about Beanstack, and about our other services. Have a good one, guys, and see you next time.